Happy to be here. Super. Is this your first idea yet? Yes, it is. Okay, well, they're mostly harmless. I don't think you have anything to fear. Hey, as the creator of, of JavaScript while you were at, uh, I guess, Netscape at the, at the time, um, you're probably the best person to give us a little bit of the, of the history uh, and evolution of the language. Sure. Uh, I had 10 days in May 1995 to put it together. I was inspired by self and scheme, so it has good parents, first class functions from scheme, prototypes from self. I was told to make it look like Java. And it was used at first for form validation and image rollovers and annoyances, but it's grown up to be the full language of the web. Wow, and, and, I, and you know, it's really incredibly popular. Can you, can you give us some statistics? Uh, sure, I mean, it's, it's grown in popularity thanks to libraries for it, like jQuery. It's the most popular programming language on GitHub, uh, the social hacking site. And it's, it's, a lot of that is due to Node.js, which is a server-side use of JavaScript, so it's grown outside the browser, too. Wow. So we're here today, we're talking about multi-core and, and mini-core computing. Can you, can you say how multi-core has impacted JavaScript? JavaScript so far on the client is predominantly sequential, uh, but we, we really would like to utilize the full capabilities of multi-core hardware. OK, well, come over here. We may have a solution. Just at hand. Here's Tatiana. Come on up, Tatiana. All right, so, um, so we've just been, been talking about, uh, about JavaScript, and I know you've been, um, you've been working on some of, the, some of the technology that might address this problem of no multi-core for JavaScript. So tell us about it. Sure. This is a demo <coughs> of River Trail, our parallel extensions to JavaScript. What you are seeing on the screen is a physics simulation of n bodies. So what is here are specks of dust floating through the space and interacting with each other. Okay, how interesting does this sound? <laughs> okay, so obviously it's not doing very well, uh, just running sequentially three frames per second. Not too impressive. What else can you show us? Okay, well, this wasn't river trail. This was standard JavaScript. Now what you are seeing is river trail. This is parallel, this is 10 times speed up, 45 frames per second. So this is running now across all the cores at easily a 10x speed up. Uh, wow, 15x, I mean, this is amazing. We can do image processing, audio, video, computer vision, uh, maybe voice response in JavaScript. So, um, you know, talk about how difficult it would be for a JavaScript programmer to learn how to use this parallel extension. Actually, this should be quite easy because this is not a new programming language. This is just JavaScript. We simply gently extended it to add parallelism in a very simple way. And because this is JavaScript, it also preserves the security and safety properties of JavaScript. We don't add any security concerns with this, and we also as portable as JavaScript. So what do you think, Brennan? I'd like to try it myself. How do you plan to make it available to the community? Well, actually, it's already available. It is on github.com. The project name is River Trail, and we'd like web developers to come and start using it and help us to make us better. That's wonderful. Do you have any plans for standardization? Absolutely. We'd like to see this as part of standard JavaScript. We'd like to take it to JavaScript standard. I work with the ECMA JavaScript standards body. I, I'm going to promote it there. Thank you. <laughs> well, I think you guys should get together backstage. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Tatiana. And thank you, Brendan, for joining us for this first public demonstration of the parallel extensions for JavaScript. Thanks, Thanks very much.